Welcome to ACC Nation. That's Will Ogin and, and I'm Jim Quist. It's 2024 and there's plenty of sports to talk about. More surprises every time we turn around, Will, something either really wild is happening or something really good. And wild and I'm good. I'm expecting something to break while we're talking tonight. <laughs> Probably. It, it may, may be the bottles that we're consuming, celebrating the fact that Nick Saban is no longer going to be coaching <laughs> Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, that sounds terrible, man. 72 years old has had a hell of a track record, but God almighty, Nick, we're glad to see you gone. Holy <laughs> crap. Talking about dominating, uh, college football. What do you think that's going to do to the college scene? Before we get into talking about the coaches that are allegedly in line for the, the job, uh, what do you think it's going to do to the overall scene? It could be huge. Just when you look at the school, it's Alabama. It's arguably the best program in college football. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been for a long, long time, except for that gap about you know 15 to 20 years ago. They've been a consistent national championship program. And – you're arguably the greatest college coach of this generation is now gone. And it, it, it gets in a lot of way, you know, this is, you, it, you know, he, it's, it's hard to replace someone like him. And with the rabid fan base, Alabama is the pressure is going to be on to win right away. And it, it, obviously it's hard being the the one to, to take over for a legend and sometimes it in most instances doesn't always work um it's yeah in the dominant once we know who's taking over for for um Saban there are going to be a lot of dominoes to fall especially if it's you know Dan Landing for example the the Oregon coach it, you know that's going to open up Oregon Oregon's one of the top, you know, the most well-funded football programs in the country, they can pretty much go good who they want after that. And then the dominoes will fall from there on and on and on until you get some to the, to the point where, you know, things finally start, you know, settling down and you start getting some new, but I'm, I'm very curious to see where they go because, because of when it happened January 10th, after the season, you know, a lot of commits are, you know, a lot of players have committed. I know they they had one player who hadn't signed yet decommitted today on Monday as we record. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to me. But most importantly, what are, you know, you, you the whole thing that changes Alabama football, you know. Paul God's retired. Who do we worship now? <laughs> Good God. <laughs> there's an answer to everything. I never expected that. Uh, I've been sitting on this all day and it took every ounce of strength in my body not to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this one I wanted to keep a secret. I'm glad you you pulled that one out. Uh, uh, the, the old rabbit out of the hat. That was a good one. I like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. What What's Paul Feinbaum going to do now? Is it time for him to retire? <laughs> <laughs> He'll, he'll, have nah, he'll, he'll, he'll latch on to somebody else. Who's he going to brown nose now? Oh, did I say brown nose? Is that inappropriate for Paul? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess we have to wait and see because we don't, we don't know who's the next coach at Alabama just yet. Mm -hmm. Could be whoever that is. Could be, you know, it could be going into the Kirby Smart's ass for all we know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. In fact, I think <laughs> a lot of people on this list are probably going to go, you know what? Only if we have to mm -hmm. turn their nose up. So <laughs> here's the uh, here's the list as I see uh, have seen it so far discussed. Uh, Dan Lanning is tops. Then Steve Sarkeesian at uh, Texas. Uh, then I, and, you know, I don't know if I'm going to say his name right. Kalen De DeBear 
Ed Borst, the boar. Yep. Okay. You know, it's the diamond thing. Uh, then here we go. You know, <clears throat> nothing good about the ACC except for two coaches that uh, are on this list, Mike Norvell and uh, Dabo Sweeney. Now, here's the thing with Dabo. In his contract that he signed in 2022, uh, he can be bought out by any other team other than Alabama for $5.5 million. But if it's Alabama, it's got to be seven and a half. Somebody was smart there. We know who that was, uh, Radakovich. Uh, that that was a smart yeah. move. Um, yeah, I don't five see... years ago, like this would have been an absolute lock. He would be, he would be the next coach of Alabama had Saban retired five years ago. Now, if you look at legitimate candidates, I, mean, I even tweeted this out today. I'm not even sure he'd be in the top ten. I don't think he is. Clemson, because yeah, exactly. Because Clemson's kind of fallen off a little bit from from its heyday. They could still get there, certainly. Uh, but Florida State's come up so much that they're kind of the class of the league right now. Um, and just the way his the way he doesn't use the transfer portal. Um, now, at a place like Bama, you may not need to, at least, at least, a lot. I mean, yeah, you can get your your Jameer Gibbs, for example, or you know your other other people who have come in and and you know done great things. But ultimately, Bam, people are going to go to Bam and stick there, especially if you're a five star, for example. You're 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 pretty well set. Or for will your they? Three to four years. Or will they? I mean, in the know, past, well, well yeah. who's to say what's going to happen now? It's way too early to speculate. Exactly. And, and, but, you know, to speculate, because that's just what we do, because it's fun. Um, I I would tend to think that there's going to be uh, even further falling off of this program and that there's going to be a, a flood. A floodgate is going to open come summer of players hightailing it out of Alabama, unless there's something spectacular that occurs. Yeah. In, unless they hire somebody who is really dynamic and who can come in and talk with all these guys and make them feel like, hey, we're just going to continue what we've been doing here at Alabama. Um, just a new face, you know, new time. Um, mm -hmm. But I, Yeah, and you're, you're right. And it's just – I could see a short-term drop-off maybe this year, like this upcoming season now. And by short term job, I'm talking like they might not win the national championship, but they might win single digit games for once, like they, nine. They may not make it into the twelve team playoff. Oh, oh, wouldn't that be fun? Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's that's kind of the big story at least at the moment. The other big story that's going on is the NCAA uh, announcing that NIL basically is going in in-house. So that means that all of these NIL programs that popped up with all of these schools um, and surrounding these programs are going to have to either come under the thumb of the NCAA or the proverbial is going to hit the fan and there's going to be a, a breakaway of all of these teams because they're going to, they're going to say, you know, we see the benefits here of doing what we're doing. And why do we need to, why do we need to get back underneath the skirts of the NCAA NCAA of the last two years, two, three years has absolutely been a pain in the ass to everybody and their brother has been, feckless has been weak need has not done their job when it comes to enforcing uh you know rules and and regs and violations and everything except for you know they just seem to point out certain people and and go yeah. you know we're going to make you pay for the sins of everybody else in the sport and i god ncaa 
really anymore when it comes to football? Really? You think you're gonna you think you're gonna grab all that and bring it back in? They Let's just see. steadily keep taking L's and and then it's just gonna continue to be the case. I don't see how this is gonna work. It's gonna be you know, I think it's gonna be option two, like you said, Jim. They're gonna say, you know what, we're gonna break away. This is this is just where it's heading. I, and essentially, Will, when we had the decision that was made by the CFP in regard to Florida State, mm -hmm. there's your sign. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it was very obvious that, um, and you know, I've said it, I've said it before, I've said it on the podcast. Look, it's power and money. And if you want to throw the greed factor in there, sure, that's in there as well. Yeah, it's all about the greenbacks. And, um, you know, once you, you know, multiple coaches have said, once you let this this thing out of the bag, it, it's going to be really hard to put back. And boy, are they right. And we're about mm -hmm. to see the proverbial it hit the fan. Mm -hmm. So, 100%. I don't have any problem with paying players. I really don't. I, I you know, we've had this discussion for years. Mm -hmm. Have we not We've talked about how, you know, it, it's, it's kind of unfair the way that the system has been set up yeah. um, and where a, a coach can take off and make millions of dollars, but players, they can't transfer and they can't do this and they yeah. can't make money, et cetera, et cetera. You remember those days? I do very clearly. And a lot of those players do. And a lot of people are still PO'd about it. And yeah. so now that you have NIL and, and people, uh, you know, all you do is pick up any, any sports magazine or uh, go on Instagram or any other platform threads, et cetera. And you'll see people who are in college uh, living in uh, high rise apartment buildings, driving very expensive cars um, and indulging in things that the average uh, fan could only dream of. Now, I'm not. Um, I'm not going to say that's a look. These kids worked hard to get to where they are. They're, it's no different than the NFL or any other professional sport. But look, if you're if you're going to be paying people big bucks and you're making big bucks off of it, which we know that that's the case, it's huge money, huge money. Then damn it, share that money with the people who are actually the product, and those are the players. And if the NCAA steps into this, I can't help but think they are going to be stepping into a fresh cow pie and it is going to be ugly yep i think you said it pretty well moo all right <laughs> moving on um golly man it's like you know it's just, it's just one thing after another hey um i was looking at the uh the final top 25 uh football uh poll from a the ap and uh, basically, this is the way it's laid out. Michigan at number one, which, you know, yeah. All right. Washington. They're the champs. Yeah. Duh. yeah. <laughs> Texas, number three. Uh, they lost to Washington 37 to 31. Number four, Georgia, who won over Florida State. Number five, Alabama. They lost to Michigan 27 to 20. Tied at six. Tied at six. Florida State and Oregon. What, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> me? Really? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Getting punished in the rankings for not giving a damn about a bowl game. I mean, that was like, <laughs> that was like literally like you're play, basically playing like, Georgia was playing like for Florida, like a, technical college i don't know if there's a florida tip but it's you're basically playing like a, a fcs school you know basically it's they really did not care and with, with them getting them getting left out proved that you know the the regular season didn't matter but 
I I think it was kind of I think it's really dumb. You put they were the they were the fifth best team in, or fourth or fifth best team in the country all season long. I mean they they it. I, they didn't deserve to get punished for not caring about basically an ex, a postseason ex, exhibition that you know the the skeletal remains of their roster played in. Mm -hmm. And you know this is another thing that comes up. You're you're bringing up a topic that I saw a lot of discussion over. That's why are we even even. bothering to have bowls and the number of bowls that have just absolutely increased over the years. And it's all about, again, it's all about the greenbacks and, and all about the greenbacks. It's all about giving us something to do while we're sitting at home during the Christmas holiday. Those of you who actually do get to sit home during the Christmas holiday, some of us still work like, you know, <laughs> anyway, uh, but Yeah, and Wait, I, let me let me let me ask you a question, Jim. Ask How many bowls did you actually watch this year outside of the playoffs? The the entire bowl, the entire bowl season. How many games did you watch, not including the playoffs? I barely I barely watched any, to be honest with you. Like the I watched the uh, Pop Tarts bowl for about a half. You just want to see the Pop Tart, basically. Yeah. Like, avoided the Mayo Bowl at all costs. You know why? <laughs> um, I would I would say it's a win to lose that game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, like that was that was the only reason I really care is to see the, the whole Pop Tart thing, and I was kind of curious about you know the game, but I but I really did not pay much attention to bowls this year, and it's not like I could have watched some of these games, but. And and I did watch some of the the bowl game because it was um the the George and Florida State game because it was on a bald man while I was there having a couple of beers that day and I think I watched the first half was watched the first half because it was on there I wouldn't have gone on my way to watch it otherwise I only watched about total somewhere between five to seven minutes of the uh, national championship game and that was. I think around the third quarter, I just I, I I flipped on for a couple of minutes just to see, you know, where things stood and how everybody was playing, and saw enough. And I said, I'm not giving any more time to this. So, wow. I did watch both playoff all both playoff games plus the uh, championship game. So I did I did do that at least. But uh, many of the like I just. Especially as we got deeper in the bowl season with the power five teams who didn't have their normal people. I just, it just, I, I didn't care. I mean, it's, it's their right. They need, they should, especially if they're getting ready for, for, you know, to go to the pros or whatever, that's their right to set out. And I have no issue with that. It's just, I just, over the last handful of years, I just haven't cared about bowls unless there's certain matchups that I want to see. It's it's just become um, unwatch unwatchable because of that's part of the reason. But a lot of the matchups are um, are lame yeah. to begin with. I mean, I you know, there's so many bowls, so many teams. You're not going to get really good head to head matchups in all of these bowls. Um, and the amount of money that people spend to go to, you know, airplane ticket, hotel room, food, tickets to the actual game, you know, people who go to the games, hey, more power to you if you want to spend that money on that. I spend my money on other things. It includes airplane tickets and food and hotels as well, but it's doing something that's going to last a lot longer than uh, two and a half, three hours. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I'm just, I'm losing interest in college football. And I never thought I would say that the, at least postseason. during the season. I'm, I'm good, but postseason bowl action. I'm, I'm really starting to just say, I don't care. I just don't care anymore. And I, that's a shame. Um, I, I think that 
I think it's I think it's slowly but surely being destroyed. And um, I think I think most people will will stand back from that for just a moment and go, you know what? There's a lot of truth to that. And not everybody's going to agree 100 percent or 80 or 70 or even 50 percent. Some people will go, are you full of it? Um, and that's OK. You know, it's it's good that everybody's got an opinion here. Um, we watch a lot of sports and, uh, sometimes we notice trends a lot quicker than the average fan who may be only following one team. And, um, you know, because we do watch so many games, uh, but I mean, Phil, Hey, look, for the last 10 years, all you have to do is start going uh, and looking at the numbers that are are filling the stadiums or not filling the stadium is probably a better way. That's one. Hey, the numbers are okay on TV, not super in some situations. Um, but, you know, anymore, why even bother to go to a football game if you can watch it on TV? Especially if you're going to have to pay outrageous prices to get in um and and because of that you know people would rather stay home and watch it on tv they get they get more out of it out of it you can like i'm just going to use myself an example i'm sitting here while we're recording i've got clemson virginia tech on i mean not that i'm anywhere near blacksburg but i could also watch another game on a second TV I have in my face, I'm actually watching hockey because, you know, I'm in Minnesota. I watch hockey, but, um, but you know, I can, I can watch multiple things and don't ha- I don't have to pay anything to be here. I can just, other than the mortgage, but <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> I, I don't have to pay a hundred of dollars to go see, see it. And I can sit in the comfort of my home. Yeah. And, and watch it. And, and I think, yeah, if you love it enough, sure, go for it. But not everyone wants to spend all their, you know, money going to a sporting event, especially if you have children, because they their attention spans are only so much, and they're not going to be fully invested in it in the same way. That's right. Um, and who wants to pay twenty dollars for a beer? Raise your hand. Exactly. Um. And and especially some of the swill that you get in in stadiums and and <laughs> hockey rinks. Uh, I, look, I can I can go with that that same twenty dollars and go out and get a a really quality craft brew or something and and be a happy camper and have it right there in my refrigerator, not more than a couple of feet away, and mm-hmm. eat whatever I want to, basically free to some degree. So you know just complaining yeah. left and right here aren't we hey happy new year everybody yeah uh, we're we're angrier now uh, <laughs> other games uh number 14 notre dame they won over oregon state 40 to 8 um number 19 louisville lost to usc 42 28 number two clemson uh 20 clemson um, one over Kentucky, thirty-eight to thirty-five. Number twenty-one, NC State lost to K-State, twenty-eight nineteen. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, I'm going to uh, throw these folks in here because they're part of the uh, they're part of the ACC now. Um, number twenty-two, uh, SMU lost to Boston College, twenty-three to fourteen. And uh, out of our RV category, Duke. Defeated Troy seventeen to ten. Boy, that's a game that I'd be uh, absolutely paying big money to go see. Um, so it's going to be an interesting year, football wise. Uh, Manny Diaz is taking over the reins at S- uh, at Duke, not SMU, but uh, former Miami uh, assistant uh, Rhett Lashley is at SMU and doing a pretty good job, apparently. Um, so you've got um, Cal, you got SMU, and you've got Stanford, and uh, we've got uh, SMU in the um, ranked category going into the new year. So we'll have an additional ACC uh, team in that. Here's something that's going to be fun. 
week zero, the Aer Lingus uh, College Football Classic, and don't put words in my mouth, that is in Dublin, Ireland, uh, is going to feature Florida State and Georgia Tech. That's on Saturday, August the 24th. Jeez, it's just around the corner, isn't it, Will? Uh, and guess who's going to be there? ESPN's College Game Day will broadcast for the first time outside of the U.S. at this game. And oh. before before I add something in here, uh, I want to say that Pitt is also scheduled to play um, in that classic in 2027, and they're going to be taking on Wisconsin. But now getting back to Florida State and Georgia Tech, and college game day, you know, I I would rethink, um, uh, to be honest with you, I'd rethink my appearance of college game day um, at, a, at a game opening the season with Florida State fans. And uh, I will also throw in <laughs> that, um, uh, and, and, and unless you're Irish, you're not going to get this. And you may even have to look it up then. But uh, I'm a descendant of Colonel Kelly. And you'll do Colonel Kelly a lot of, of righteous. Or you'll just do it, do right by Colonel Kelly. If you have the appropriate signs welcoming college game day to Dublin. Now you go look up Colonel Kelly with Irish history and you'll see what kind of rabble rouser my ancestors were. <clears throat> and um, if any of my uh, family is <laughs> over in Dublin or anywhere in Ireland decides they want to go to that game, uh, feel free and make sure that you have the appropriate signage for all the, uh, the boys college game day. Um, 17 teams this year in the ACC. So there's going to be, uh, we're moving from 56 to 68 conference games. Um, it's going to be no divisions and eight conference games schedule will be released at 9 PM on January 31st on ACC network. In case you want to, uh, see the complete lists of games, I, I'm looking forward to to some of uh, the the match uh, matchups. I, I think SMU is going to give people a run for their money. I really do. Can't say anything yet about Cal and Stanford. We're going to have some people from all three uh, come join us on the podcast. We're going to be talking football. We're going to have a preview of all three a little later in the season once they get their spring thing done. And uh, so I'm I'm really once they're official members of the league. Yeah, it's going to be uh, going to be fun to to see where that goes. Um, I might figure out a way to travel to one of these games. So. You go go to go to SMU. That's actually what I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking about going to SMU and um, and watching. Because you actually have a chance of seeing decent football there. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know if I have much hopes for Cal or Stanford this year. Um, maybe, maybe Cal might be. I think Cal went to a bowl this year, then. They yeah, or my yeah. yeah. Yep. But Stanford could, but they're they they got some work to do. Um, yeah. And they're doing it. So. Yep. Need need to take some time. I, I I have no idea what what either one of these rosters look like. I haven't really cared much because it's too early. I'm in bed by the when they're usually playing. So. <laughs> too early to be talking about it other than than how we are right now so uh -huh. all right let's let's talk um basketball because um we, we certainly have some action going on there I want to remind everybody to check out jason carmelo's big underdog.com that's big hyphen uh big hyphen underdog.com you can uh, find the link to his site on our page at accnation.net check out he uh his bracket his latest brackets on there i know that uh, i saw the other day that people were complaining 
from the Wake Forest circle of basketball friends were complaining uh, that they weren't getting any kind of um, respect. And as a matter of fact, um, <laughs> their coach, who has a way with words, uh, was, was uh, I basically put something that Mike Barber had tweeted from, from Steve on accnation.net on the website. And it was um, Steve was basically going, Proctologist, bracketologist, I don't know the difference, <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Basically complaining, you know, that they weren't getting enough respect. And I want to point out to you, Demon Deeks, that most assuredly Jason is giving you respect. He's got you in the first four out the last time I looked. Now, I haven't looked in the last day or two, so I don't know. He, he may have changed that, but at the time, so basketball wise, top 25, only three teams out of the uh, ACC. Number seven, UNC is moving up a little bit. Duke moving up a little bit more and Clemson falling a lot. So seven, UNC, 11, Duke, 21, Clemson. Let's talk and with that. the way tonight's going, Clemson could fall out next Ooh. week. They're down. They're down. Currently down four to Virginia Tech with uh, about eight minutes left. Um, long ways to go still. I. Uh, but yeah, it, tonight it, as we're recording tonight on Wednesday, it's it's been a weird night for for basketball. Let's just say that. Um, are they playing? In, they're playing in Blacksburg tonight. Yes, they're in Blacksburg. That's that explains everything. That is a uh, a, a pit of vipers. Yeah, <laughs> just, I mean, place feel play. like yeah. Outside, it's a rare. It's a rare instance that where somebody goes on the road and wins. I know uh, second uh, or Tuesday night. I know Duke went into pit and obliterated the Panthers, but. I don't know, but we we still have a long way. We still have some time left, but uh, but as we're recording, Louisville's winning at Miami Ooh. with about seven minutes left. Wow. No, well, that's surprising. <laughs> yeah, that's a that would be a big shock because yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, Hey, maybe people have uh, been talking bad about the uh, Louisville coach prematurely or not. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that all ends up at the end of the year, whether or not uh, he's he's carried over. I, I, I Correct me if I'm wrong, Will, but does, doesn't there seem to be a little progress going on over there at, at Louisville? You know, it seems like it's slow, but it's it's kind of going, getting a little better, maybe a little. I don't know. I, I'm very much skeptical still. I don't think, I still don't think much of of Louisville. Uh, they're not. I, I mean, even he, I, let me let me make sure that everybody knows he he thinks highly of Louisville as a school. And as an overall program now, yeah, great program. <laughs> Kenny Payne, Kenny Payne still ain't it. And then, of course, I mentioned something, and Miami has gone on a run, gone on a run to tie it. So, <laughs> but still, the fact that Louisville's in it with Miami at Miami with you know what less than six minutes left is pretty. Has a, but I also didn't. I know Miami's down a couple. I believe they're down a couple players too. So. The fact that, like I said, the fact that Louisville's hanging with Miami is pretty damn impressive. Yeah, it is. Um, th th this is part of the reason why I think that that there's it, things are are slowly coming around. I don't know whether or not it's going to be enough to save the man's job. I don't know. Yeah, it takes takes time to build programs, yeah. and you got to have They're patience. And my God, uh, Louisville fans. Um, they are very competitive 
very competitive and you know that's a cool thing i get that um but man you got to have a little patience thrown in there every once in a while too yeah exactly but I, I I can understand it from the Louisville side if they decide they want to get a bail on Kenny Payne after the season. There are, there are things that show that he's just not a competent head coach, and they can do much much better. Yeah, well, yeah, you would you would think that Louisville ought to be able to draw. Mm-hmm. However, it's all that contentiousness that that's that churn that's been going on the last couple of years has really started to to uh, put a bit of a black mark on that program, too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's something that people have to start thinking about. You know, tone it down just a little bit, give people an opportunity to to do things, and if it doesn't work out, don't turn it into this big rigmarole. I mean, it's like um, there are some some players who can go into New York City and succeed uh, as a professional player and uh, others who can't because that media there will eat you alive every single second of the day. Um, Louisville is, yeah, kind of in that department. So, yeah. Um, and and it, it, it's pretty, it, they are, they're a very passionate fan base. They're not like, rabid like at like alabama football is they're no. they're definitely more more of a passionate fan base um i don't i they they can be some of them can get a little red but they're nowhere near the, on the same level um but it, it, it would be kind of maybe it's just been a weird week for college basketball because on tuesday night number one purdue went down number two um uh, houston went down and then tonight Kansas, whose number three is losing, and number five, Tennessee, is also losing. Yes. So we're just – things uh-huh. are going crazy all over the place. And that doesn't mention, you know, you, as we um, – UConn just tipped off. So gonna, and then Carolina and NC State are playing, and I expect that to be a very competitive ball game too. That'll be a hot and heavy one. Okay. Women's basketball. To wrap things up here, NC State, who was uh, up at number three – um, got bumped at the last second at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech started out the year as the top team in the conference. Uh, Virginia Tech is now at 11. They move up two notches. Louisville is at number 15. They're up two. Notre Dame at 18. They're down two. North Carolina stays even at number 20. And uh, Florida State is up one at number 21. So, um, that game between NC State and Virginia Tech was uh, some wild, and there were some wild comments on on social media about how that game transpired too. Yeah, that was a a very gutsy inbounds pass for the win because a lot you have to have that like in the perfect spot to get that and. And he, it was it was a great play, um, like perfect pass, perfect spot for for the game winning layup. I mean, you, if you underthrow that, it's a steal and the game is over. If you if you you know a little bit harder, and that probably goes over her head out of bounds. So it really has to be like pinpoint perfect, and it really really was. Uh yeah, I I uh, will agree with you there, hundred percent. I. I watched that over and over and I was just like, wow, that that's one of those moments that you will never forget if you're the players involved then. And it's, and if you're a fan, you'll, you'll keep that one with you for a while too. So um, Louisville uh, moving up just a couple of notches here to number 15 and Notre Dame dropping to 18 so um, those are our two teams that typically are leading the ACC uh, or have in the past. And, of course, you know, some personnel changes and co- coaching changes there uh, have made a, a bit of a difference. UNC uh, hanging in there at number 20 and Florida State starting to ease up a bit um, at 21. Um Again, 
it's it's so funny. I was looking at uh, some rankings of ACC women's basketball um, and how they're going to fit into the bracket at this point. And uh, it's it's kind of dominating, even though uh, a lot of people are talking about about other conferences and how they're performing. They're sort of missing the boat here on on how competitive the ACC is and how all of these games between teams that are ranked from six to twenty one, um, all these are adding big points into the net uh, ratings or rankings for each one of these teams when they play. So we've been saying that the ACC would be a gauntlet and that is definitely held true. And it's funny thing is, is as you were talking there, I looked up on my TV screen, they showed a highlight of that game winning uh, game winning uh, bucket from the, the game we were just talking about again, the NC state. So fun timing. <laughs> Um, Stanford is also one heck of a, uh, a women's basketball program. So we're going to throw that into the mix next season. That is going to be f- fascinating. I'm not sure exactly where they, they are, but they're, they're pretty much in that top echelon of women's basketball teams and, um, Cal and SMU, I don't think are in there, but Stanford definitely is. So that's a, that's a team to keep an eye on next season. Um, when uh, women's basketball gets underway, I'm looking forward to all these schedules and and how everybody's going to be matched up. There's there's going to be some just incredible games. People have have discounted to their own disadvantage. They have discounted Cal, Stanford, and SMU in ways that I I can't even begin to fathom why you've done this. But if you look closer into each one of these schools and what they are good at, what they can be good at and how they're raising money. I was looking at SMU's um, uh, page the other day and, and saw how they were raising money. And it's just like, this is staggering. This is, you know, ACC, uh, programs could learn something from the SMU. I mean, they are just going at it hot and heavy, raising money. They want to win. Um, they plan on getting into the Atlantic Coast Conference and making a mark from day one. And, and that's uh, why they were they can afford to not have that money for the for the right. next few years because they they have so many donors who are willing to step up and and fill the coffers per se looking forward to it my man hey it's mm-hmm. good to be back in 2024 it's good to see you hope you had a great holiday and yeah. enjoyed yourself you and uh, your lovely wife um yeah. we look forward to hopefully seeing you in different venue mm-hmm. this year because i think that uh, my lovely wife and i are, are going to be uh, headed out your way sometime who knows when but uh that's that's when you'll be out of town. I know how you work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll conveniently uh, go away. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, I want to encourage everybody to make sure you subscribe and and uh, follow us. Give us a like for our podcast, ACC Nation podcast. You can find us on our our uh, web page at accnation.net. Um, simply go to anything like uh, well, Apple, Google. Uh, you name it. Well, we're on iHeartRadio, all all over the place. You can find the podcast. If you want to listen to us on radio, we're there available 24-7. We're streaming. Um, look for your favorite platform there. There's a lot of them. Or you can just simply go to accnation.net again. Um, and, of course, YouTube. And you know where that's located. This program will be on YouTube along with a lot of others you can watch. We'll be having a lot of guests here in the next couple of weeks. We're going to be talking a lot about basketball, a lot. So keep it right here. Make sure you subscribe, like, follow us. Thank you for doing so. Hey, for all you folks who are overseas, we know you're there. Thank you for following us. Thank you for listening. We do appreciate it especially all you uh, men and women who are in the military and following all the schools in the ACC. Until next time, 
Cheers. School.